Hello, so in this video we're going to be looking at a question which involves finding the inverse of functions where uh, the inverse and the function include ln x and the exponential function. Okay, so um, this question I split into three parts. So this is a sort of exam style question and I'm just going to do each part separately. So the first bit, it wants us to find the inverse of our function. Our function looks like this, f of x equals ln of 2x minus 1 and x has to be bigger than than a half and x is bigger than a half because we must have this thing as positive um, because you can't find the log of a negative number. So the first thing is we just redefine our f of x as y so we let y equal our function. We then want to rewrite in terms of e so instead of having it as a log we want to rewrite it in terms of the base and the power and the answer. So remember the base and the power equals the answer. So this can just be rewritten like that. And if you had that, you could rewrite it in terms of log and base e. And don't forget that ln is log and base e. So I just do it like that. So you can see clearly where the base comes from. Um, so the next step, we want to make x the subject of the equation. So it's just a bit of rearranging. We're going to add 1 to both sides and divide by 2. And so we get this. Now, when we find the inverse, what we then do is have to swap our x and y over. So that's all I've done here is wherever I've got x, I've written y, and where I've got y, I've written x. And then finally, we get the answer in terms of the function notation. So f to the minus 1 of x, that's the inverse of our function, equals what we have here. Uh, so whenever you find the inverse, it's the same same sort of thing. This is slightly got an extra step in here because you have to change the log um, into something where we've got e as the base and the power. And the second bit of the question, write down the domain of the inverse. Now the domain for the inverse function is the same as the range of the function. Um, so whenever we're talking about domain, we're taking talking about the x values which were allowed and whenever we're talking about the range we're talking about the y values which were allowed. So if we start off by thinking about what is the range for f of x. Now when we have um, ln of anything positive the y can actually take any value. So if you just sort of sketch it very quickly look something like that and you can see that we can have any value on the y axis. So it can be all real values of y and therefore the domain, so we've said the domain for the inverse function is the same as the range for the uh, function. So the domain of the inverse function will be all real values of x. And we're talking about x here because domains are talking about x's and ranges are talking about y's. Okay, so the final bit, on the same axis, sketch the graphs of the two function functions. Um, I start off by looking at this one here, which is the function we were given. We know that x has to be bigger than a half. So first of all, we can draw this line here, and we know that we ha can only have our x values this side of the line. We know what a ln function basically looks like, just sort of a curve going up. So the only other thing we need to do is find out what this point here is. So we want the point when y equals 0. So y will equal 0 here, and that's the power. What number do we have if we have a power, um, a number to the power of 0, any number to the power of 0? We get 1. So because we've got um, e to the power of 0, we know that this, at that point, at that junction, has to be equal to 1. So we say 2x minus 1 equals 1 this gives us ln 1 equals 0 and so we get the point when y equals 0 um, and that equals 1 when x equals 1. So now we can draw this in and we've got that point and that point and then this is the key thing, this is the key thing next. The inverse of one function is always a reflection of the function in the line y equals x. So here's the line y equals x here And then we just need to reflect this over here. So just make sure that all the points are the same as you go as you go 
through. So if this is at one, that's going to be a one there. This is a half, that's going to be a half there. And then you have it. So the key thing to remember that the inverse function is always a reflection of um, the function in line y equals x. And so once you've got one, you can always draw the other one. Okay, I hope that's helpful.